Today we'll begin with the fifth day of creation, chapter 1, verse 20, as we completed the fourth day in yesterday's class. In our book, 11, by Yomer Elohim, and God said, Yishrutzu Hamayim, let the waters swarm, sheretz nefesh chaya, with swarms of living creatures, the eif, ye eif evala oretz, and let birds, fowl, fly above the earth, al pnei de kiyashamayim, in the open firmament of the heavens. Rashi nefesh chaya, she hei there should be life. Sheretz, what is the word sheretz? Swarms, kol dovar chai, any living thing, she'ena gavayim in oretz, which is not too high from the ground, kari sheretz is called a, a swarm. Ba'ef in the fowl department, kigain zvuvim, like flies, they fly not too high from the earth, bashkotzim, amongst the creeping things, kigain nemolim v'chipushim v'toiloim, ants, beetles, and worms, Babrius amongst the animals, kigain chaled v'achbar v'chaymet, a mole, a rat, a lizard, ukayetzabahem, so all these things swarm, the chol hadogim, and all fish swarm. So Hashem created all of the swarmy creations. 21, by Yivra Lukim, and God created us, Ataninim Agadelim, the great sea monsters, the big massive fish. I guess the whales, the ace called Nefesh Achaya, and all other living creatures are a messes which swarm, Asha Shotsuamai, in which the water gives forth in a swarm, Liminehem, species by species. The ace kol eif konof, and every winged creation limineo by its species. Vayara lekim kitev, and God saw that it was good. So here we have the creation of the fish and the fowl and anything that flies and anything that swarms on the earth. 21, what are these big fish? Hataninim dogim gdelim shabiyam. This speaks of the massive fish in the sea. Again, like whales. The Medrash says that in addition to speaking about big fish as we know them today, he speaks specifically of two specific fish. There's an old tradition that when Mashiach comes, the righteous will be resurrected. They'll come back to this world, to this earth, in physical bodies, and there will be a feast. And the feast will contain Shor Habar, this amazing prize ox, which will be slaughtered, and the Leviosan, this amazing prize fish, which will be slaughtered. So we're talking about a monster ox and a monster fish, which will be slaughtered, and will contain enough meat for all of the righteous. And of course, there's a lot of debate. What does this mean? And uh, righteous people, they need meat and fish. And, uh, righteous people are, are more righteous than uh, meat and fish, besides the meat has cholesterol. So what is going on here? And there are many interpretations. In fact, on the lighter side, they say that uh, there was a very, very great tzaddik who was known as he was unbelievable. He was more meticulous in his observance than anybody else. And uh, Mashiach came, and he was resurrected and brought back. And uh, they invite him to the great meal, Mashiach's meal. And they say, would you like to have uh, meat or fish? Would you like to have from the Sheir Habar or from the Leviosan? So he says, please, I hope you don't mind me asking, but who prepared this food? Who is the Sheikhet? Who is the mashgiach? He's accustomed in his life. He always wants to know whose meat it is. Is it this shkita, that shkita, very religious guy? So they said to him, you know who the shaykhet is? You know who the mashgiach is? The rabbi shalom, God in heaven himself. What are you asking? He says, oh, thank you. In that case, I'll have a fruit plate. <laughs> Again, that's from uh, our lighter side department, Okay. That does call forth for a smile. Okay, thank you for that chuckle. 
Well, so the Medra says, who Leviosin, this refers to that big fish. Leviosin, which we talk about, will be created especially for that great messianic banquet, or Ben Zugoy and Mrs. Leviosin. Because you have the Leviosin and its mate, Shebrom, Zachor, and Akeva. When God created them, he created them male and female. Vahodagas and Akeva, but in order that they not be fruitful and multiply, God killed the female, or Melocha, and salted her, preserved her, made a big, giant Leviosin herring. Let Tzadikim, lost love, they preserved it for the righteous in the world to come. Why? Because Hashem was concerned that if the Leviosin and its wife, its mate, are fruitful and multiply, they're going to consume the entire world and uh, the water will never again be safe. Shem yifru v'yirbu lo yiskayim o'elem b'fneim. If they'll be fruitful and multiply, the world will not survive them. So therefore there was only one Levyosan, the male left, and the female was pickled. Nefesh chaya sheyesh b'chiyas, a creation which has vitality. All of these verses, of course, have endless medrashim, giving the inner teachings, but we also take them literally. 22, Vayivore, no, 20, yeah, 22. Thank you. Vayivore chayisem elokim, and Hashem blessed them, Lamar saying, Peru or Revu, be fruitful and multiply, umilus hamayim and fill the waters, by yamim in the seas, vihaif yireh ba'oretz, and let the birds multiply upon earth. And here is a very important commandment that God in creation commands the marine life, the fowl, every one of God's creations are commanded to be fruitful and to multiply. That this is a mitzvah for the world to be fruitful and multiply. Therefore, there's a serious halacha question. It's not even a question as to whether a Jew is allowed to bring about any form of the opposite of that, to neuter or castrate animals or any form of life, because Hashem wants all life to be fruitful and multiply. Again, this is not a class for halacha, but just bringing out that there is a serious issue here. God's creation instructed to be fruitful and to multiply at every level. 22, they needed a special blessing because men reduced their number of its sudden mayhem and they hunt them down. And they eat them so they can become endangered species. They have a special blessing. So also the animals. Why weren't the animals included in this blessing? Because the serpent is about to be cursed in the story with Adam and Eve. Therefore, the blessing did not come at this point, so the serpent should not be included in this blessing. Pru, Russian pre, meaning from the expression of fruit, climate asupetus, produce fruit, or revu, him lay omar ala pru, if he would only say pru, one would beget one, revu, comes revu, she'echad meilet harbor, that one gives birth to many, and the fish and the fowl produce food for the world. 23, by he erev and evening came, by he boker and morning came, yom chamishi, day number five. Going on now to the next day, we'll take a few more moments. 24, by Yom et Elohim, and God said, Teitzi ha'oretz, let the earth bring forth nefesh chayo lamina, a living creature by its kind, behemo, animals, domestic animals, varemes, and creepy things, v'chaiseyeretz, and wild animals, lamina, by their species. By Yichena, so it was. Teitzi ha'oretz, Rashi goes back to his shita, to his philosophy, that's what I explained earlier. Rashi said earlier, and he repeats it again and again, that everything was created in its raw state of creation on day one. And now the earth had to give forth this creation. Which has life. 
These are the creeping things, which are low and creep on the ground. It appears as if they drag along, slithering, because they don't look like they're really walking. They look like they're floating. In our language, Mouvier in old French. 25, and God made the beasts of the earth, Lamina after their kind, and the domestic animals by their kind, and all the creepy things by their kind, and God saw that it was good. He fixed them with their nature and their full growth, bringing them out to their maximum potential, putting them in position to be fruitful and multiply and to reproduce. So that is the creation of domestic and wild animals. So now we have fowl and fish the day before, domestic and wild animals on the sixth day. Everything is ready for the creation of man. So Hashem said, and as the commentaries point out, Rashi points out, who did he say it to? He said it to the angels who were created earlier with the birds. Nasa Odom, let us make man bitsalmenu in our image, kidmusenu after our likeness. The yirdu, and let man have dominion, and let man rule bidigas hayom over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the heaven, and the domestic animals, over the entire earth, and everything that creeps upon the face of the earth. Rashi 26, Nase Odom. Why does God say, let us make? It's as if he has partners. Furthermore, this is misleading. One could believe that there's more than one God. Says Rashi. In From here we learn the humility of Hashem. Because in a sense, part of man emulates angels. We know on Yom Kippur, we stop doing all the things that man has in common with animals. We don't eat, we don't sleep, we don't mate, we don't do bodily comforts. And we do all the things that man has in common with angels. Because man is half animal, half angel. Being that man is half angel, man is intelligent, he's emotional, he's a a creator of sorts. Therefore, Hashem did not want the angels getting jealous. So he has a consultation with the angels. They would get jealous. Therefore, Hashem, allegorically speaking, took counsel with them. When he judges kings, he also takes counsel with his heavenly court. We find with the story of the terrible, evil king, Ahab, Ahab and Jezebel. Micha said, I saw an image of God, said the prophet Micha, sitting on his throne. And all the heavenly hosts, Aimdamullah, stand over him. Miminai to his right, to Mismele to his left. Does God have a right and a left? God is the creator of right and left. We talk about the angels who are angels who are on the right, they defend. Angels on the left prosecute. So also, we just learned this in Tanya. Big Zedas, Eden, Pisgomo, the matter is by the decree of the watchers of a Maimer Kaddish and Shelta, and the sentence is the word of the Holy Ones, referring to angels in the book of Daniel. Afkan, so also, God, allegorically speaking, consulted with his group, with his people. Omar Lahem, he said to them, I want to ask you something. Yes, well, Yainim Kidmusi, there is 
create there are creations who are in my likeness and my image on high, meaning the angels. If there are no creations in my image below on earth, meaning in the physical realm, there will be jealousy amongst the world's works of creation because the physical and the spiritual mirror each other. Therefore, God consulted with the angels using this logic, preparing them for the fact that they will have a heavy competitor on earth. Even though, needless to say, the angels did not assist God in creation. And this would give a source for heretics and skeptics to disagree, they'll say, aha, uh-huh, there's more than one God, chas v'sholem, God forbid. Because God said, let us make. Le'inim na'akos of the Torah does not hold back. Mil'alamit from to teach us derecheretz, proper etiquette, umidas anova and modesty. She'yei agodol nimlach v'neitol rishus men It's always appropriate for the greater person in an organization in a country, in a family, to consult with the lesser person. That makes people feel good. Hashem took the trouble to make the angels feel good. V'imkosav, had he written, Es Adam, I shall make man, le'lamadnu, we would have never have learned, she'yei medabed in Bezdine, that he was speaking with his court, heavenly court, elimatzmi, but to himself. Uchuvas haminim kosav b'tzideh. What about the response to the heretics? who would deduce from here a very serious deduction that there is more than one creator. Immediately, there's an answer to those who want to see it. It says, Vayivra es Adam. He singularly created man. But like Kosa Vayivra, it does not say it in plural. Bit salmenu, bit fushalonu in our form. Kid musenu, lahavnu, lahaskil. To have intelligence and to understand and to discern. Vayirdu bit gasayom, yesh belosh nazel losh yiridu, belosh yiridu. There is an expression of dominion, v'yirdu, and also an expression of, of subservience. Zoha, if man merits, reida v'chai yisubabhemis. He has dominion and control. He controls the wild animals and the beasts. Lai zoha, but if he doesn't merit, nase yorud lifnei, and he becomes subservient to them. V'chai yameshel azbei, and the beast rules over him. So that tzadikim rule over the animals, but when people become like animals, the animals rule over them. 27. And God created man in his image. This is a famous verse, the verse of creation. In the image of God, he, Hashem, created him, man. Zohar unikeva bara isam. When God created man, he created a male female entity, a unit, as Rashi will explain, containing a male female creation. 27. By Yivra alakim as Adam betzalma betfus ha osila in the mold which was made for him. Shahakal nivra bamaimer because all other forms of creation were created by divine decree, by command. The who but man, Nivra, was created, allegorically speaking, biodayim, with the hands of God. Shanamar, as it says in Tehillim, 139, verse 5, Vatoshes olai kapecha, allegorically speaking, and you laid your hands upon me, so that by way of allegory, Nasa, man, nasa, man was made, bechaisam, with the stamp of Hashem, kimat be'ah ha'asuya ha'idei like a coin which is made by a die, shekainu, which is called coin, v'chainu emet tisapik kechem rechesan, that like clay under the seal. So man was made by Hashem in a particular image, in the image of Hashem. B'tselem elokim bora eisei pirish lecha, he explains, eisei tselem, that that image which was made is Tselem the Yoikan Yetzri, who it's the image of the likeness of the Creator. So here we talk about the fact that God is made in man's image. When we look into Kabbalah and Hasidus, the image are 
the ten attributes of God are mirrored in the ten soul powers of man, and the body of God, uh, I'm sorry, the body of man mirrors the soul powers of man. So that, as he says in Patach Eliyahu, which is the source for all this, Chesed, for example, Dro Ayemina, that kindness, the attribute of kindness, is represented by the right arm. Gvura, severity, is represented by the left arm. It doesn't mean, Chas Visholom, God forbid, that God has a physical body, that God is, good morning, corporeal, Chas Visholom. What it means is that the soul of man, the ten soul powers of man, mirrors the attributes of Hashem, and the body of man mirrors his soul. Now Rashi goes on to say, here, in the very first verse of creation of man, he talks about the fact that man was created male, female. That seems to be conflicting what it, with what it says later. Later it says, that he took one of man's, most people interpret it as the translator in our book does, ribs, and he called the anesthesiologist, he did surgery, took a rib of man and made woman. So first of all, as we will learn, the traditional interpretation of tzela is not rib, but side. Like the tzela hamishkon, that he took one of his sides. But still, here there is an account of creation, male and female. And later, the account is that God created female from male. Medrash Agadah, the Medrash says, and it's interesting that Rashi, who he himself says always embraces the most simple interpretation available, places this here as part of the simple interpretation. And many people are not aware of this, especially the feminists. Shebro'oi shnei partsufim bebriya rishayna, that when God created man, he created, I'm going to use my words, sort of like a Siamese twin, a male-female creation attached together, man and woman in one body, and then in the surgical procedure described later, he separated the man and the woman who were created facing away from each other, he did the surgery with the anesthesiologist, separated them, did some plastic surgery, because everybody has to make a living, then turned them around, introduced them to each other, and said, and now your challenge is, can you get along? Now that you have to look at each other. Before you were one, but you didn't know each other exists. You were one entity. Now you have to come together and become one entity and not kill each other. But the end of the story is the lawyers make all the money anyway. Not that there's anything wrong with that. The achakach and then he divided it. The simple interpretation is kan here he lets us know that men and women were both created on the sixth day of creation. Somebody doesn't explain how. And he explains it in another place. 28, again, a famous verse. And God blesses them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Peru, Urevu, be fruitful and multiply. This is the first mitzvah that God gave to man, is to have a lot of babies. Be fruitful and multiply. Umilu esha'oretz. And fill the earth. V'chivshuha. And subdue the earth. And this is a very famous teaching. That by Torah, the world, the earth, nature was created to serve man. Man has to subdue nature. Be fruitful and multiply. This is just the opposite of some philosophies who say that nature 
is nature. And that's the cat's meow. Man comes and ruins nature. And therefore, no more ruining nature. And everybody has to stop, and you have to stop living and stop. That's not what Torah teaches. Torah teaches, of course, we have to be sensitive to nature. We're not allowed to pull up a, bra- a blade of grass, even a blade of grass, unless we need it. However, nature was created to serve mankind. Man rules the world. Hashem tells man to be fruitful and multiply and to subdue, to subdue and responsibly utilize nature, and it'll all be okay. That is the Torah philosophy, which is why we're allowed to use creation, we're allowed to use the inanimate world, we're allowed to use the minerals, we're allowed to use the vegetable world, we're allowed to use the animal world, all responsibly, gently, in a divine manner, but the world is there to serve man. That is all in this verse. So again, peru or avu, be fruitful and multiply. Don't be afraid of overpopulation. Umilu es and replenish the earth. V'chib shua, and subdue it. Uredu, and have dominion. B'dgas hayom, over the fish in the sea. Of eifah shamayim, and the birds in the heaven. Watch out for uh, bird strikes. You'll have to have miracles on the Hudson. And every living creature, which crawl upon the earth, man should have dominion over all of them. Not that nature should rule man. Man should rule nature. 28. This word is lacking of all. To teach you that in the male-female relationship, and this is a very delicate verse in today's world, I never sent it. I never said it. It wasn't me. That the nature which God created man and woman with is that the man appears at least to conquer and master the female. That she should not be outgoing. And if we want to look at this a little bit deeper, that the nature of the male and female is that the male is, so to speak, the representative of the male-female unit to the outside world. He goes out to war. He conquers. She is the Akeres Habayis. She is the one who rules over the house, rules over the family. We see that to to this day, even in dysfunctional families, it is the woman who rules over the family and the man who's all over the place. This is the nature that Hashem invested, or to say it clearly, that the man is the head, and as the Torah teaches, the woman is the neck, which tells the head which way to turn, but not in an overt way, and that is the best prescription for peace in the family, according to the teachings of Torah, that the woman should rule the home, and the man should think he's ruling the woman, but in fact, the woman decides which way the man should go, and the man is sent off to war. There's a cute story they tell. There was this couple who uh, were dating, and before she agreed to his proposal of marriage, she said, who's going to make the decisions in the family? And uh, she said, I have an idea. You'll make all the major decisions, and I'll make all the minor decisions. She says, that sounds good. So they signed the Tenoyim, and they got married. Anyway, a couple of years go by, and she decides what kind of car they should buy, and she decides what kind of house they should buy, and she decides where the kids should go to school, and she decides how they should outfit the house, and she's making all the decisions. So he turns to her and he says, I don't mean to upset the apple cart here, but didn't we have an agreement that I will make all the major decisions and you'll make the minor decisions? She said, of course, and that's exactly what happens. He says, what do you mean? You decided the car, the house, the education, the furniture, everything. She says, absolutely. And you decided whether we should pull out of Iraq or we should stay in Iraq. Should we do a surge in Afghanistan? Should we not do a surge in Afghanistan? Is there global warming? Isn't there global warming? Those are all the serious decisions. I do the little tiny decisions that have to do with house, car, education. Those are unimportant. You deal with the big decisions. That's what the Torah says here. 
that he goes to Afghanistan and he goes to Iraq and she runs the house. Eight, furthermore, will Ametcha to teach you Shoish, that man, Shadarke Lichbeish, whose nature is that he likes to go out and conquer stuff. He's all over the place. Mitsuba, he is the one that is commanded by Hashem, Alpiriya to be fruitful and multiply. The man was given the mitzvah to be fruitful and multiply. Veloi Haisha, not the woman. How can you be fruitful and multiply without a woman? That's a challenge. He doesn't mean to use test tubes. It's now up to the man to convince the woman to be his partner so that together they can build a home. She could be the akeres habayis so that he can fulfill his mitzvah to be fruitful and multiply. What she's doing is she's partnering with him to enable him to fulfill the mitzvah. That's an interesting technicality. 29. And God said, Behold, I have given to you all the herbage which gives forth seed, which is on the face of the entire earth. And every tree in which there is pre eats the fruit of a tree, giving seed, to you, ye it shall be to eat. 29, the next verse says, and to all the animals, the Torah makes equal to them, to the human beings, the animals and the beasts regarding food. Because the fact is that just as man was sustained by vegetation, the animals were also sustained by vegetation. Man was not permitted to be meat-eating until later. They all were vegetarian. Man was a vegetarian. Animals were vegetarians. When was man permitted to become meat-eating? When God gave the seventh of the seven Noahide laws. Because up to now, there were only six. What was the seventh law? When Noah and his children emerged from the ark, for the first time, God permitted them to eat meat. As it says, every moving thing that lives should be for you as food. And then he gave the Noahides the seventh law cruelty to animals, that although you may eat animals, but it has to be in a very sensitive, gentle way, specifically never cutting a limb off, a living animal, and eating the limb before one kills the animal in a very painless manner, which is where the laws of Shechita come in. Ritual slaughter, Kiyetic Esav, just as the green herb, which I permitted Adam, to eat, now said God to Noah and his three sons and their families emerging from the ark, I have now permitted you finally to eat meat many, many years after creation, but you cannot engage, God forbid, in any form of cruelty to animals. 31, closing verse. Thirty, and to all the beasts of the earth, to all the fowl of heaven, and everything that creeps on the earth, which has a living soul, all of these will eat vegetation. By so it was thirty-one. and God saw everything that He made. It was very good. So here we find that in the sixth day of creation. There's also a repetition of good. First it says, in the end of 25, and now it says, it was evening and morning, the sixth day, all the other days, here it says, because he finished the deed of creation, Lamer to say, that he stipulated with his creation, 
Amanashi Kablo Le Mistral Hamisha Kumshatura. Hashishi He has the numerical value of five that the entire world was created so that the Jewish people can accept upon themselves the five books of Moses and engage in Torah study and Torah observance. Dabarach another meaning, Yom Hashishi, Kulam Tluyim Baimdim. They all are suspended and stood in a temporary state. Ad Yom Hashishi until the sixth day. Which sixth day? The sixth day of Sivan. When the Jewish people received the Torah at Mount Sinai, Shavuos, Hamuchan Lamat Torah, this is the day that was designated already by creation for Torah to be given to the world, because even though the Jewish people were given individual commandments here and there, even though our patriarchs and the tribes knew and studied and observed Torah before it was given, but the formal revelation at Mount Sinai didn't happen for 2,448 years. It happened 2,448 years later on the 6th of Sivan, when the world was form, when the world formally was given the Torah, the revelation at Mount Sinai, which is hinted by the Hashishi, the sixth day, meaning the sixth day of Sivan. We'll stop over here.